Marcus Conti, former sanitation enforcement agent, City of New York, investigative journalist, plaintiff in Conti versus DSNY. So uh, we're coming out the other end now, right? So we saw all the nine write-ups, nine fake falsified write-ups, two for two were for calling in sick, another two were for failing to sign and with a gun to your head and drop a screwdriver, refuse punishment, you know, th those sorts of things. There's nothing, there was nothing, we didn't see anything severe, anything that historically in the, in the history of DSMY even merits uh, termination. So, so that leads to, now that it's a, again, a piling on effect, and that leads to the accusation that all of Mr. Conti's um, performance evaluations were unsatisfactory. Actually, that's not true. One of them, the last one, the very last one, three of four were unsatisfactory, right? So let's look at the first one. I, again, I've always said that the two conspirators, now, you, now you've seen the, the broader picture. If you've been paying attention and following the series, you know that the two main conspirators are, are Pascal and 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 uh, uh, Amiskita, right? And above her is Burke. So Burke, what's his what's his vested interest in seeing me uh, fired? It's that he's protecting the quota. Is there a motive? Of course. The 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 quota brings in, you know, low estimate twenty five million dollars a year. I, I I shut them down. They've been doing this for thirty five years. That's you know six hundred million dollars that they've stolen from the public illegally using an illegal quota an illegal ticket quota you know maybe if they're doing a third of that now they're still you know well whatever as long as it's not a quota then then we don't have any problem but we we cut down so there is you know financial motive so so the first person we have to look at is is Pascal she wrote the first unsatisfactory and what was that for we look you know here's here's her here's her uh here's her assessment in the class right let's put this thing up and you see it says that uh it was actually done by somebody else a uh, uh, a garnet uh, again these are these are the these are the puppets right let's just look at who signed it so she gave she you see initially the satisfactory and then she circled unsatisfactory and checked that one off and initialed it right she changed it this was not in the initial um initially that that was that wasn't there and what was her grounds for and then you see it again look at the bottom part you see the 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 signature unsatisfactory circled when she initially checked off satisfactory and and it leads it you see the 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 comment is a wall right We've already talked about that. That was in a previous uh, write-up, and you see that it was it was a false write-up that Greenwood and Pepe were arguing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, trying to get a write-up, and they stuck it on someone named a Sergeant Smith. So those are those are all fake write-ups, right? Now the other the other guy is Amiskita, right? And Here's the here's the, the here's the connection. You want to you want it. You think to yourself, well, how is Pascal manipulating Amosquita so much? Right? Amosquita became Pascal's direct underboss in the training in Floyd Bennett Field in September. Right? So you remember, if you remember the the uh, Ortega audio, Lieutenant Ortega comes into the Manhattan Zone in September, mid September, and he gives his speech about what he expects from the workers. And he basically reiterated the, you know, the modus operandi, which is write 10 tickets a day. If you do it, you don't have a problem with me, right? That's the rules. That's how it's always been, right? So so you hear, um, so from September, th that's why this is important, because from September, mid-September, when Ortega comes in, right, all the way till the end, when I was fired in December 3rd, there, was very, there were no write-ups. There were very little conflict, Ortega and I, you know, worked well together. There was no, there was no issue. Why? Because Amosquita was yanked out of there, and he was working directly with Pascal. See, they already had the plan that they were going to fire me on the last, 
you know, the last couple of days. It makes it makes sense now. But the big mystery is is why if if I was such a horrible person worthy of of unsatisfactory, the first one was Pascal, then then how come Ortega never noticed it? Right? How come how come I had this wonderful work relationship with Ortega you know, I did what I was supposed to do. There was no problems. There was nothing. There was nothing to even talk about. And you hear him. We're going to play his the firing audio, and you'll hear him in his own words. But let me just talk about Amiskita for one more second because he's responsible for two of the unsatisfactory write-ups. And we heard in another audio where where Hampton was the puppet, and and they're in the other room pushing pushing Hampton to push the unsatisfactory in front of me trying to get me to sign it. And when you don't sign it, they give it to you, they give you another one and another one and another one. So that's the game. That's the, the modus operandi. And again, Amiskita is is the one who lied in the official DSNY position statement to Miss Neal, right? The EEO director, who prepared, is the author of the SNY's position statement that was submitted to the state as part of a federal investigation. And Mr. Amiskita said, the lieutenant stated that the SNY does not have a quota of tickets to be written on a daily basis. Agents are never instructed to write a certain number of summonses. Right? Now, that's damning, that's damning stuff, right? The other part of it is Miss Neal, right? So he's saying that in, a, in an official position statement to Miss Neal, the director, the executive director of EEO, who was informed on three occasions, I informed her of the ticket quote. She was well aware of it. And then Amiskita came in and lied, and, and, and she didn't do anything about it. So obstruction of justice. She failed to disclose the quota. She's supposed to call DOI and say that there's corruption. She didn't do it, right? Amiskita failed to report it because he's he's not only is he not reporting it, but he's lying on the record. Burke is also guilty. Burke is in his five emails that he sent out to all of the supervisors, all of the supervisors that are named in, in Burke's emails, and the two the two or three chiefs, Klingler and Pompeo and Sierra and all the rest of them, right? They're all named, they're all aware of the punitive of the, the punitive uh, tool of foot patrol, block face, sector, punished anyone who writes less than 10 tickets, protect the quota, right? So they're all aware of it, right? That's where we're, you know, we're now leading into, we're leading into obstruction of justice. But, but most importantly for my case is that if you've been following along, am I, do I seem like someone who's, who's, who who can't follow an order? Who's a stupid person? Who everything he touches, he, he breaks, he drops. Okay, so to clarify, I'm I'm a, you know I have a bachelor's degree in nutrition. I graduated from Syracuse University. I I've been I was a uh, you know a, a manager in high end catering for a number of years, where I managed staffs from five people all the way up to you know, staff of two or three hundred people in very large events. I was a, a clinical nutritionist out of college. I managed a staff of 40, a kitchen staff of 40 people. You know, again, and I don't say these things to, I'm an author of, you know, two and a half, three books. I, I get, I'm a musician. I've been in, you know, many bands of author of hundreds of songs, probably three or four hundred songs. And, um, I traded the markets for a number of years. I, I have, you know, I was, I lived in Manhattan for another, a, a, a number of years uh, in downtown. So, the the point is, am I am I am I an incompetent idiot, a fool, someone who can't, you know, go through someone's garbage and write a ticket? It, you know, no, it's just not. That that's what I'm saying about it. It's not believable. Also. Um, all right, I'll put this one up. This is my my class. All right. All right, so I teach guitar sometimes too. These are my students, right? beautiful kids in a in a in a you know uh, uh, African American church. So the the idea that these these folks want to paint me as some 
you know, white supremacist or racist or someone who can't get along with, with blacks. You know, it's just such bullshit. It's really, it really, it's, it's, it's very, very, very offensive. Right? Oh, here's, here's my cat. This is Batman. Right. Here's my other cat. That's, right. uh, never got around to naming her. That's White Cat. So let's listen to um, let's listen to Ortiga's the final the final countdown right the final recording is Lieutenant Ortiga who again is I, I mean look I'm not going to apologize to you Mr Ortiga they they threw you under the bus right? right they didn't tell you that this was going on and you and I had a a, a good good relationship we were. I wasn't a problem, right? I wasn't. A, I was never a problem. I did my job. Hampton told you that over and over again. That none of it made sense. That it was personal. That they were attacking me for <clears throat> racial reason, reasons, and what we found out to be exposing the quota. So, let's listen to Ortega's audio, and then I'll, I want to comment again and just say goodbye. Agent Conquest, sir. I was informed to let you know that today is your last day serving really? from the Yes. Really? Fine. I do not know. They just told me today is your last day. I need your your, your ID, your shield, and your summons. Okay. Um, your vest. Everything that we gave you, I need to get it back All today. Right. Okay. Yeah. No pink slip, no document, well, no nothing? They could send it to your house. I have no idea. They just called me and told me. Who's they? Uh, Inspector Kelly. Okay. All right. I'll get my stuff. All right. So you hear the first part of it. It's very congenial. It's, I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, again, for three months we have a good relationship and I'm working and everything's fine. And then he's, he's put in the position to fire me and he doesn't know why. Right. He's just like, I, I do not know, you know, and I push him. He gives a name, Kelly, Kelly, Inspector Kelly. I have no idea who that is. I never found out who uh, Inspector Kelly was. So let's listen to the rest. No, I have to come in here with you. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be funny. No, I hate it. Because I don't really know what's going on, and I'm in the middle of it. Oh, I'm serious. I'm in the middle of something. I don't know nothing about it. There's nothing. That's it. That's it. So right there, that's the whole thing. He says, "There's, um, um, they put me in the middle of it. I don't know, I don't know what's going on, right?" And I tell him because there is nothing. It's just, it's, it's a, they're, they're manufacturing. It's what Noel, Noam Chomsky. Remember, you know, if you know who Noam Chomsky is, Noam Chomsky wrote a book in the '90s about uh, called manufacturing consent, and that, that's what they're doing. Yeah, that's what, that's what the whole write-ups were about. They're trying to manufacture consent. So that they can move it into the executive side of DSNY and get me fired. Why? Because for the quota, they got to protect the quota. So for three months, this this guy was my immediate supervisor, and he has no idea why I'm being fired, right? And I tell him, you hear the last thing I say is because there there is nothing. It's just it's all fabrication. So that that's the that's the. Um, so, based on what he said, would he have given me a satisfactory? <laughs> would I've gotten the would the fourth, uh, you know, review have been satisfactory? Of course, based on his attitude, there was nothing wrong, right? He couldn't. It, it seemed like I said, it, it's impossible to believe that someone is so disruptive. I again, I was a manager. I just told you, I managed staff for years and years. It's impossible to believe that someone is so disruptive and so disorganized and so so di putting the the organization in such disrepute that he would have lasted three months without a without even a sign of any dissatisfaction whatsoever, right? So again, the the story isn't believable. The nine fake write-ups are manufactured consent, and then the 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 two the three. Um, unsatisfactory performance evaluations manufactured by the tool to the two tools Pascal and Amiskita are you know that's it it makes sense where it's coming from right now you the other the other part of it is 
is again they they can why is what what is what's in it for Amiskita? Amiskita had the had the the luxury of going out and teaching in the class directly under Pascal. He likes that because why? He's he's lazy. He doesn't he, he he when he was in the office he never did his job. He would sit in the corner and watch video games, right? So so he he's he's over there with Pascal and they're just planning they're taking in new people and and you know doing the gaslighting programming them and then they're going to come back and 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 oust me out and put in a new a new round of people uh it, it, to replace uh, people like me so that's all for now peace out